Hi everyone. Alright, today's video will be over graphing inequalities. Your objective, I will be able to represent inequalities on number lines. So we're used to seeing equations in which the left and the right sides are equal and we see an equal sign. In an inequality, the left and right sides are unequal. So we are going to see signs like this. So keep in mind, this means greater than, this is less than, and less than, think of the L, it points left. Greater than or equal to, whenever we see this little line right here, that means or equal to. Less than or equal to, and then if you ever see this symbol, it just means something is not equal. So whenever we graph an inequality, it's just showing all the possible solutions. So here we see x is greater than 3. So that means any number that is bigger than 3 would be a solution for this. So 4, 5, 6, and so on would all be solutions of this inequality. So whenever we graph an inequality on a number line, we have to graph it with the variable on the left side. So if we saw something like x is greater than 7, we would want to make sure that that x is on the left side. And if we don't see it that way, we have to flip it around, and you'll see an example of that in, the, in a moment. So whenever we graph, we are simply going to fill in the number line in the direction that the sign is pointing. So if you see a greater than sign, you are going to shade to the right because it points to the right. Now, if you see a less than sign, you would shade the number line to the left of that number because this points to the left. Now, keep in mind that if you had something like x is greater than 2, that means every number that's greater than 2. So 2 is not actually included in the solution set. So if something is not included, you would have an open circle at that number. So here you would have a 2, and the open circle would be at the 2. So a little trick for that, if that number is not included, think of that letter O and how it's an open circle. Now, if something is greater than or equal to, we still shade the same direction because it points right. Same thing here, less than or equal to, we shade to the left because the sign points left. But let's say we have something like x is less than or equal to 5. Well, if it's less than or equal to 5, that means 5 is included in the solution. So if this was 5, I would have a filled in circle. So think of the word included. If 5 is included, we need to fill in the circle at 5. So let's do some examples together. All right, example 1. Graph x is less than 4. So I'm going to find 4 on the number line. That would be right here. So if x is less than 4, I know that my graph must be shaded this direction because this points to the left. And our variable is on the left, so we know we can go ahead and graph it as is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade the number line to the left. And if x is less than 4, obviously all these values here are less than 4, so we know those are correct. Now it's less than 4, so that means 4 is not included. So I want to have an open circle at 4. If it's less than 4, I cannot have 4 as part of the solution because that's actually equal to 4, and I only want the values less than 4. Example 2. Graph negative 2 is less than or equal to x. Now, we have an inequality in which x is not on the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it around. And be careful and make sure your symbol still points at the same number. So this would say x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So I switched the sides and I made sure this was still pointing at the negative 2. Now I can graph. So I'm going to find negative 2 on the number line which is right here. Since my inequality points to the right, I'm going to shade to the right. 
just like this. Now, if x is greater than or equal to negative 2, that means negative 2 is included in the solution. If it's included, then we have to fill in the circle at negative 2. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So it's equal to negative 2, and then it shows all the values greater than that that are part of the solution set. All right, example three, what does the following graph represent? Well, we know that when we write an inequality, x is going to be on the left, we're gonna have some symbol, and then the number is gonna be on the right. So we're just simply gonna say, okay, where is this graph starting? Well, it's starting at the number one. One will be on the right. This graph is filled in to the right, so I know that my symbol has to point to the right. And this is filled in so I know that this solution can be equal to one. So I have to show that it, x is greater than or equal to one. And as we see here, the graph is equal to one and it shows everything shaded in that's greater than that. So yes, x is greater than or equal to one. All right, example four, what does the following graph represent? Again, I know that the variable is on the left The graph is starting at negative three, so I'm gonna put negative three on the right. This graph is shaded to the left, so the symbol has to point to the left. And now, this negative three is not filled in, so negative three is not included in the solution. So since it's an open circle, negative three is not included, it would not be equal to negative three. So I know I simply leave this symbol the way it is. X is less than negative three. And as we see on the graph, negative three is not actually included, but everything less than that is shaded in. All right, let's do some very short word problem examples. So example five, the temperature during the winter of 2014 was at least two degrees Fahrenheit. So whenever we see something like at least, at most, minimum, maximum, things like that, I like to use this little tool right here. So this right here is showing something from least to greatest. So in this problem, it says the temperature was at least two degrees. So that means if I were to put numbers in order, it would be two at the least. So now I'm just gonna fill in numbers from there. So after two comes three, then four, then five, and you get the idea. So if I were going to write an inequality to represent this, I know X goes on the left. We're dealing with the number two. So two would go on the right. Now, since I'm filling in numbers, this direction, my symbol will point to the right. So this is so far saying x is greater than two, and as we see, all of these numbers are greater than two. Now it says the temperature was at least two degrees, so it could be equal to two degrees. So it was two or more. So since it can be equal to two, I have to say that x is greater than or equal to two. So now let's go ahead and graph that on the number line. So here's two. So I know it's pointing this direction, so I'm gonna shade this direction. It is, it can be equal to two. So since two is included, I fill in the circle. All right, number six. The classroom holds no more than 30 students. So no more than 30. So now, more, I'm gonna think of that as the greatest, okay? So we're gonna start with 30 on this side. And now I'm gonna think what comes before 30. Well, 29, 28, 27, and again, you get the idea. So it holds no more than 30 students. So I know X goes on the left. I know the number goes on the right. So 
as we see, we're filling in numbers to the left. So that means my symbol is going to point to the left. And yes, we do see that our numbers here are less than 30. But now we have to ask ourselves, could 30 be included in the solution? Well, the classroom holds no more than 30, so it can hold 30 at the most. So yes, this classroom could hold 30 students. So that means that this is less than or equal to 30. So now I'm just going to put 30 on the number line, and I'm going to fill in a couple numbers around that. So when I graph it, it's pointing this way to the left, so I'm going to shade to the left. And since 30 is included, I'm going to make sure I fill in the circle at 30. All right, now it is time for you to try. On number one, graph this inequality, and on number two, write the inequalities that are represented by these two graphs. Make sure you show all of your work, and we will see you next class day.